starting a business takes time this is six years right so i kind of just had to you know have a conversation with myself like what do you want to do like you have to go for it if you this is what you want if you want to have a business go for it i think this is gonna be a lot longer than i thought <laughs> Hi everyone, so today I want to talk to you a little bit about why I became a dietitian, what I do as a dietitian. Um, I want to talk to you about all the questions that I get asked all the time on Instagram about being a dietitian and also being a black dietitian. So I got myself some coffee, it's the morning, and let's talk. First things first, I've been a dietitian for about two years. Oh, it'll be, th it'll be three years, January 2022. I became a dietitian for a few different reasons. I actually had personal lived experience with something called food insecurity, when you don't have the financial resources to access food. And that's something that really, really made it, took a, an effect on me growing up. So I just saw how important food was to your health and to your wellness. And I saw the impact of not having enough of it. So that really inspired Inspired me to really learn more about food, learn more about things, something called the social determinants of health, and learn more about ways that food can be used to lead a healthier, more enjoyable life. I was debating on becoming a dietitian or becoming a cosmetologist, like makeup artist, hairstylist. That's what I actually was really passionate about. And it wasn't until like I think the eleventh grade in high school where I had to t I took a cosmetology course over an, a chemistry course. But then I I just decided that you know what, let me do this dietitian thing. So I kind of put all that stuff aside and pursued dietetics full time. Got into all the programs that I wanted to get into and I ended up going to study at a school that was outside of my home city. So I actually left, I went to a, a city, a small city compared to where I'm from, I'm from Toronto. And yeah, it was like a culture shock. I was like one of the only black students in my program. So that was definitely a culture shock and I definitely debated on staying in school. I kind of felt like an other being there i was one of the few black students and then i was also super interested in something called public health so this is something that was a new area for me but it was something that i had always wanted to do i just didn't have the language to describe what i wanted i had always been interested in public health you know, community nutrition looking at the root causes of food issues and not just supporting people with like their nutrition but really looking at the root causes of why people can't access food or maybe have poor health outcomes related to food whether that's something like their housing situation poverty unemployment education or their built environment so what does it actually look like where they live and these are all things that i was interested in but i i didn't actually meet a lot of other people that were interested in that so i was already like one of the few black students and i was di interested in something different majority of the students that i went to school with were interested in something called clinical nutrition so more of that direct patient care working in hospitals like that clinical setting and that's something that i never wanted like thankfully i did find other people eventually that i could relate to so i you know did the undergrad I finished, then I actually had always wanted to do my master's degree and there was a master's of public health in nutrition and dietetics and I had always wanted that. In order to become a dietitian, you actually have to do an internship or a combined master's program. So the first thing is you have to do an accredited undergraduate program. One other thing too, I'm registered in Canada. So I am a Canadian registered dietitian. Depending on where you are, things are gonna look a little bit different. And even in Canada, I think since I went through the programs and different requirements, I think things have changed so just definitely look into how to become one where you are because this is how I did it and I think it might have changed over time I did the accredited undergraduate program and then I took a year off because you have to apply to internships and you have to do all this stuff like you have to do a lot of volunteer work have good grades you have to take all these courses and then you also have to apply to an internship slash master's program that was extremely extremely stressful okay and it's expensive so let me let me add that too it's expensive to apply to all these things and you're doing all these unpaid volunteer positions and it's just a lot like it's a lot right and you feel pressure to do a lot because everyone else is doing a lot and it's just super competitive and that's just never been my 
vibe. So I remember when I was initially going to be applying for internship slash master's program. This is me when I'm in my fourth year and essentially now everyone's applying and you're basically competing with your peers to get an internship slash master's program. And it's just not a good vibe. Like I didn't like that energy. I'm more of a community based person, like support one another, all that stuff. So this toxic competitive environment that they kind of put you in just didn't work for me so early on i decided that i didn't want to apply right away i actually wanted to take a year off it just wasn't it was it was just stressful and uncomfortable and i also just wanted more work experience and life experience so i ended up not applying for the internship and masters in my fourth year and decided to apply a year later when i wasn't in school i was just working getting more experience i applied to internships and like a diploma program and a master's program i ended up getting into the diploma program and the master's program I went with the master's program, master's of public health. And so it was a combined master's internship program. So I did that for 20 months. And then I ended up writing the Canadian dietetic registration exam. So you do have to write an exam to be qualified and licensed as a dietitian. So school, internship, exam. This whole time, I was still figuring out like what I wanted to do. And I still am, like even though I am a dietitian now, it's always evolving. Like you're growing as a person, so your interests are gonna change. And I might not be a dietitian forever, right? But this is what I'm doing right now. So I was still figuring out what I wanted to do. I knew I did not want anything clinical, like anything direct patient or client. That's just never been what I wanted to do. So while I was studying for my exam, I worked with uh, newcomers, teaching them about uh, nutrition and food skills. Then I worked at a community health center. So I was working in a diabetes education program. And then I ended up leaving that position. And then I kind of didn't know what to do. I had always wanted to have my own business, but I just didn't expect it to happen so soon. Like that place that I was working just wasn't right for me. Just the work just didn't nourish me. So I ended up leaving that position and I kind of had no idea what I was gonna do. I always wanted business, but starting a business takes time this takes years right so i kind of just had to you know have a conversation with myself like what do you want to do like you have to go for it if you this is what you want if you want to have a business go for it so i ended up not going for it i was kind of just in a bad headspace just in terms of like personal life and, but i ended up getting a position as a consultant doing more social media engagement and community engagement so consulting for a youth-led initiative i thought it was pretty cool initially but it ended up just being a big flop it was a learning learning lesson. It gave me an idea of consulting and what that could look like and just some business experience. Then I ended up doing, I ended up traveling Europe for like a month just cause I didn't know what to do with my life. <laughs> so I ended up coming back. I was applying for jobs and I ended up getting a job. This is when I worked at the community health center. And then I left there, I had no plan, no plan. So what I what was I even doing? I was just trying to figure it out. I think I tried starting my own private practice, counseling, and I had, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't want to do counseling, but I just thought that was the only thing I could do. So I, I didn't know what to do. I had always loved speaking engagements, um, workshops, facilitation. So I started posting a lot and being active on LinkedIn, like. I'm gonna put out my thoughts and see what happens. And I started doing that. People actually started reaching out to me for things. I would do a one presentation here, do something there. And then I ended up getting like another consulting thing around community, did that for a bit, also flop. Um, I didn't actually realize how many flops there were. So did that for a bit and okay, so now we are in 2019, 2020, 2020, y'all know what happened. So again, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do? No stable job. I have a couple of like consulting things here and there, but with consulting gigs, sometimes you don't get paid for months. So that was happening. I literally was like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna do my business again, trying to motivate myself, trying to do something. So now it's 2020 and I don't really have a job. I'm doing speaking engagements here and there. And now I decided I always wanted an online business. So let me start doing that. What do I wanna do? So I started being active on Instagram and really trying to grow my page. 
So I started putting out my own workshops. I was really, I'm all, I've always been super interested in emotional eating and you know, improving your relationship with food by understanding the root causes of your food issues. And so I started just hosting my own webinar. At the same time, I'm enrolling in a whole bunch of business programs. Some are free, some I have to pay for, but just to help build a solid foundation for business because I'm really starting to be like, okay, I can actually do this. So I started hosting my own webinars, my own talks and putting myself out there. So now I'm hosting webinars and building my following. I remember my first event, I had 26 people register for a paid event. Like that was huge, okay? Cause I had never done anything like that before. I was so nervous and I got such great feedback and that's really what helped propel me to keep going. So then I decided to host another one. And at this time I'm getting more recognition for the work that I'm doing. Cause I had always been posting about anti-oppression, anti-racism, cultural competency, food justice, like all these different things. And that weren't part of the main conversations in dietetics. So I just kept doing that and at this time i was like you know what you you have something you have something oh so let's fast forward to this year i've just been growing my speaking engagements growing my business I ended up creating a course for dietitian so now i have my own business where essentially a big part of it is creating content working with brands working with corporate partners creating my own resources such as like ebooks things like that and a big part of my work is also working with students now you have more of an overview about what i do and i've only been a dietitian for like almost three years now and i'm still figuring it out and i think it's important to remember that you're gonna be figuring it out like there's dietitians that have been dietitian for like 20 years that are still figuring it out or that are recreating their careers so for me i think i don't regret becoming a dietitian i definitely think i don't fit into the traditional box of what it is but i think at times that can be challenging but overall a lot that i can do it's just a matter of like what do i want to do how am i going to do it the execution and how do i demonstrate my unique perspectives and how do i support the people that I want to support, right? In a way that makes sense to them. Other questions that I get often include money, money talks. So I think that there is an opportunity to make money in this career. I think it depends on what you do, right? It all depends on what you do. And it's also like, what is, what do you want for yourself? How much is a lot to you? A lot to me could be different from what is a lot to you. So it's important to figure out like, what do you want for your life? What is it gonna cost? What do you value and things like that and figure out that number for yourself. But there are always ways to make money. And lately we've been seeing, you know, things like side hustles and, and business in dietetics. And there's a lot of opportunity there, but it's important to remember what works for you. Another question I get asked a lot is, do you have any tips around, you know, becoming a dietitian network? Working is key. I love networking just in general. So definitely don't be afraid to put yourself out there and connect with people. Like you might not always get a response, but it's just the act of putting yourself out there and there will be somebody who will be willing to help you, to guide you um, and to show you the ropes. Like I've had so many mentors that I'm so grateful for over my career in becoming a dietitian and I'm so grateful for them because I don't think I would have been where I am right now. I would say network, ask questions, put yourself out there and network. Secondly, definitely I think it's important to recognize that you're not gonna know everything. You don't need to be perfect you just gotta try your best don't be afraid to take breaks to take your time because it's always gonna be there and lastly i would say don't be afraid to start that blog don't be afraid to start that instagram page or youtube put yourself out there why not i definitely think that it's important to figure out what you want to do and you don't need to figure it out for your whole life just what is the right next step for you what makes sense for you then just the next step that's all really you need to figure out and I, i'm trying to do that more and that's been helpful for me so i'm hoping to show you how i grow my business the work that i'm doing and just to really have fun with it as well yeah that's a little bit more about me and my journey and becoming a dietitian i hope this was helpful definitely like the video subscribe share this with your friend or anyone you know who may be going through something similar. I'm looking forward to making more videos and providing you with more content. So definitely let me know what you're interested in and I can try to make that happen. Cheers.